How do you spell apologizing? Apologizing. A P O L O. Slow down. I've gone through three laptops in the last two weeks and over the course of transferring all that data, I lost all the Brain Blender building footage. Nice, do that again. No, no, it sounds good. Keep doing that. <laughs> good? Mm -hmm. all right. How's it going, guys? Today, uh, I've made my way all the way out to Canada to hang out with two of my favorite people. We got Omar Isaf and we've got uh, Jamathy Hobbleton from... <laughs> the third. From a very popular YouTube channel, The Hacksaw. Uh, and today, me and him collaborated and we made one of the coolest things I probably ever made. I'm calling it the Brain Blender. I based it off of that one zombie game that I don't even remember what it's called. The Brain Mill. It was kind of angled like this. I didn't really like the angle of it. So I changed it so it's basically like an underslung turret. Anything else? I edit these like crazy so I can take pauses. <laughs> Close ups on your face. Yeah. Oh, a lot of those, dude. If there's one thing being a YouTuber's taught me at this point, it's that for every success that I have, I'm probably gonna have about 10 failures. Uh, but sometimes I have nine failures. So if instead of always focusing on all the times that I'm successful, if I instead try to be grateful or or thankful for those times when I only mess up nine times. It makes the whole trial and error process a whole lot easier. But anyways, guys, let me show you how the Brain Blender <sighs> hopefully works. So it's actually incredibly simple. The whole uh, drive system and the battery is just an angle grinder, but there is a lot added to it, obviously. Just attaching a giant saw blade with sawzall blades riveted to it and just holding it like that and spinning it would probably be the stupidest thing I could possibly do. So I built this cage around the blade to protect me from debris or if maybe one of the sawzall blades pops off. Should keep me pretty safe. Now, make no mistake, I'm not getting better at welding. All the welding was done by James and his friend Ian, and they fixed this thing when it broke down way more times than I cared about mentioned like seriously thank you guys so much i could not have done this without you but what we've done here is we've rerouted the switch or just kind of extended it i guess so that it goes all the way back here so you actually turn it on by pushing in this button instead of pulling the trigger down here now i am a little nervous to see if this actually works because the way that we had it set up over at uh the hacksmith's lair is that he had one of his super powerful lipo batteries inside this thing and it was directly wired to the motor that had its own problems the wires kept on melting and we would attach some uh i think there were resistors or something and those would just die immediately so if you'll notice we never run the thing for very long because it actually pretty much dies after every single time that we used it but this time we've just reconnected the wires and i'm using the regular dewalt battery but i think there's all this like technology on the inside that will make it so that it might turn off if it works too hard i really hope that's not the case that would really suck but just in case uh the blade that we're making should take a lot of precautionary measures to make sure it's not overly heavy so yeah let's get to work all right so in the last 10 seconds i've realized that I can save a ton of weight by, instead of using four blades, I use these three really long blades, and since there's 60 teeth on this saw blade, I can use them as uh, measurement units to space out these three blades perfectly. Using the really long ones as opposed to the really short ones allows me to space out the rivets a lot farther, which gives it a lot more resistance to leverage. Because if the rivets are sitting super close to each other, they're super easy to shear. And with the three blade design, since the only thing making contact is gonna be the end of these long ones, the teeth would just be for show, I guess, I can trim out all the extra saw blade and just save a ton of weight on this thing and it should be able to run really well hopefully that's the hope none of this is set in stone i'm really looking forward to messing up nine times nine more times i guess all right i'll do one here here and eh, might as well do a third i'm gonna clamp the heck out of these i do not want these getting caught and whipping around in the drill press and i'm gonna use a cobalt drill bit to drill through this hardened steel all right close enough a little bit of lube here we go.
All right, so here's how we do the spacing on the blades. We're going to take this edge right here that has the teeth on it, and we are going to saddle that onto the arbor of the saw blade. Make sure you're not blocking that hole. Now you're gonna pick any tooth as long as you keep this lined up here, and you're going to push the edge of the blade right up to that tooth so that they're perfectly lined up. And once you have that, you can go ahead and mark this in case it gets moved. Now that tooth right under there is the last of 20 teeth this way, so that would make this the first tooth of 20 teeth that way. So we're gonna go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. This is the 20th tooth. So we take another blade, put it down right there, line it up with that 20th tooth on the underside right there, and mark it out. Same with this one, two, four, Six, eight. All right, now I'm gonna mark out each one of these inner holes and I'm gonna drill these ones out first. Now we're gonna do this extra simple to mark our cuts. I'm just gonna take this ruler and rest it against the edge of the outermost rivets. And we'll trace. So we'll use an angle grinder, we'll cut into here, then we'll cut into here, and then we'll be really careful not to hit the blades and we're going to cut along these lines. And repeat for all three.
battle bots or something. This is freaking cool. All right, now only a couple of things left. I can only have the blades extend out from the edge of the arbor nine and a half inches. These are a little past 11 inches. So I'm gonna have to trim these about right here. But I still do wanna keep this slant right here because that it'll give, sorry, I can barely talk. My lips are like frozen. Can you see my breath right now? Vape Nation! In case you're wondering why I have a jumpsuit on, this is why. Having the slant in the blade right here, I'm sure there's some technical term, but I don't know it, gives whatever it's striking more of a slicing motion than just a straight chop. Much more effective for cutting. Mark them all out. And cut them. Now I'm gonna use a flap disc to put a little bit of a bevel on this blade. Doesn't have to be anything too serious once this gets up to speed, it's really not gonna matter much. Now you know we gotta get that sick aesthetic, dog. Now, I want this to be dry by the morning, so I'm gonna kind of rush this. These rivets should sort of elevate the blade so the paint doesn't smudge. I need more paint. There we go. All right, see you in the morning. So the plan was to put the blade on and then test it, and if it works, then take it back off and then turn the camera on and go, well, time to put the blade on for the first time. I hope it works. Well, it works. But now that I've actually put it on and tested it, it's way too cool to take it back off. So here it is. <laughs> that was running it for like one second and it got freaking fast, dude. This thing is going to annihilate whatever produce I put in front of it. Now guys, in my 22 years of life, I've destroyed a lot of things. Uh, spaghetti squash cantaloupes, relationships, watermelons. But of all the destruction tests that I've ever done, I felt the special need to let you guys know that this one stands out. Not because of the immense work that went into making this item, but because of my personal belief and conviction, really, that out of all the trash, all the absolute garbage that any human being has ever dared to call food, I think celery stands alone. The texture is like is like eating thread suspended in styrofoam. The flavor is like Windex. Oh, but there's fiber, Eli. It's good for you. You know what else has fiber? Strawberries. The probably the best thing ever. There is no reason that modern day man should be eating celery. So with that said, I devote this sacrifice to my ancestors and to anybody who has ever been tricked into thinking that there's some reason that they should be eating celery. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just... It was really a spiritual... A spiritual experience for me. Alright guys, obviously I hope you enjoy the video and stuff, but honestly I really, really, really miss just coming out into the garage, building a thing, bringing it inside, editing the video and uploading it, and being able to upload, you know, twice a week because I'm doing it that way. So like... I really hope you guys like the collabs and stuff, but I'm just gonna be doing normal videos for some time now, okay guys? I'm 99% positive that you guys will not be opposed to the idea of me uploading more often, so uh, that's, that's about all I got for today though, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye. that way. It's not a spark there.
I should have worn safety goggles for the mosquitoes out here. grass. Homer, want to give me a hand? Sure will. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> didn't unplug <laughs> <every plug. laughs> Did it cut the grass? Oh, yeah. Hey, it did. What a beautiful lawn. We know it can kill cardboard. Wait, wait, sorry, can you start again? I just hit the button. So we know it can kill cardboard, but how does it fare against the pumpkin menace? It was an instant dead stop, dude. You hit the wood. Oh, the you wood hit the sure. wood, didn't you? Did I? I think so. Well, I annihilated that pumpkin, too. Something flew up at me. <laughs> really? Let, let's spin up a bit more mm -hmm. and make sure not to hit the wood. Should I go for this one here? Keep it just a little higher. I think it definitely clipped the wood. No, that's just how it do. Yeah, you hit the wood there. I did? Yeah. What the heck? I think it's deflecting it downwards. Maybe. See that spark though? I can't tell if that's just a spark from the contactor. Hold on. I'm gonna see if it's hot. Toasty? Oh. Melt it off. What? No. What? Oh, is that why I was sparking? Yep. It's this wire. I smell that stinky. Well, at least you look good. Oh, I didn't see him explode though. The pumpkin. All right, so because of the shape of the blades shaped downwards like this, when they would slam into the pumpkin, it would deflect them downwards. And we took a pretty good chunk out of this really big piece of wood. Do you know what kind of wood this is? Not really. Let's just say... Um, it's, oak. It's, it's really hard oak. Oh, iron wood, you say? Uh, yeah, that is the hardest wood uh, known to man. Oh, yeah, also known to man. So... Uh, that's pretty good. It's a pretty decent chunk out of it. Still got a scoop. Neat. Well, is that about good? Yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> like how Ian's sitting, like he's just watching like a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the tiniest screen of all time. <laughs> he's like, he's the Where's the popcorn? Yeah. <laughs> I've ever watched in my fucking life. <laughs> I don't even have any goddamn puppets. Wait, so is it, this is the outro then, right? Do we do an outro? Yeah, we can do yep. an outro, yeah. Move in a bit, James. Hope you guys liked it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>